あなたは日本語をあなたは何歳ですかあなたの名前は何ですかあなたはこれが好きですか Do Japanese really use あなた when they speak? Let's find out! Today we're gonna find out if Japanese really use あなた when we speak. First, I'm going to show you the definition of あなた from a Japanese dictionary. So here it says, 二人称 That means the second person pronoun. 君の軽い尊敬語やや気兼ねのあるある距離を置いて接する場合に同輩または同輩以下の人に対して用いる And here it says, a slightly politer than Kimi. It sounds a bit too formal. It can be used to your peers or someone who is inferior when you want to have some distance between you and them. 普通、目上の人には使えない。Normally, you cannot use this to your superior. 親しい男女間で相手を呼ぶ語。特に夫婦間で妻が夫を呼ぶ語。You can use anata between very close man and woman relationship, especially between spouses when a wife calls a husband. Now I'd like to share a very interesting research paper that I found on the internet. This was published in 2016 by Yoko Yonezawa, who received a PhD in linguistics at the Australian National University in 2017. Here, in her research paper named Native Speaker's Perception of the Second Person Pronoun, Anata, You in Japanese. This research used the result of questionnaire given to speakers of the Tokyo variety of Japanese in January 2014. And it says the respondents indicated that, as regular address term, they very rarely use Anata in any of the following cases when referring to an addressee of higher status. When referring to a d d r e s s e e of lower status, and when referring to an a d d r e s s e e of equal status. Instead, they expressed a number of perceived incongruities in the use of t e r m Their perception included such contradictory views as it is rude or it sounds too formal. An analysis of these results supports the notion that the use of anata absolutely specifies a second person without indexing. Any social attributes of the interlocutors. It does not inherently have the property of indicating the speaker's biographical characteristics or of indicating the degree of politeness. The study explains the mechanism that led to Anata having such socially inert role, which in turn allows its use to occur in limited contexts as well as to create disparate perceptions. Among native speakers. This also explains why Anata has never been accepted as a general form of second person address term, even after the National Language Council of Japan defined Anata as a standard address term in the proposal Kore Kara no Keigo Honorifics from Now On in 1952. I'm going to put a link to this research paper, you can find it online, and, but it's all written in Japanese. So, as it was mentioned in this research paper, in modern Japanese, people tend to think that the use of anata is a bit too formal sometimes and it could sound rude. I did a little research and found some videos where a character is using the word anata. So, let's take a look at those videos with me. Anata, どういうプリンセスなのどう言って So, here, one of the Disney characters asked this little girl. What kind of princess are you? So, in this scene, one of the characters may have not known who the little girl was. So, she used the word anata to ask a question. Let's take a look at the second video. So, here, one of the main characters said, So, here the word anata is used as anta. Anta is the casual form of anata. English translation here is Why are you the only one that knows a good deal like that? So, n a o i s h i h a n a s h i d o s t e anta dake s h i t e n o d o s t e anata dake s h i t e i r u n o So, here I can assume that the main character didn't know the guy who he was speaking to. 
That's why he used the word anta. Okay, and the next one. Okay, in this video, a woman says, Anata to isho ni kanji takatta kara. Anata to isho ni kanji takatta kara. I wanted to feel that with you. I watched this short video, and this was the conversation between a wife and a husband. The wife was addressing the husband, Anata. Anata to isho ni kanji takatta kara. So, why do Japanese textbooks use anata in sentences? Japanese sentence pattern is S O V subject, object, and verb. And often the subject can be omitted. In English and many other languages, the word order plays a very important role because it shows the relationship between parts of the sentence. On the contrary, the word order in Japanese is very flexible because of the use of Particles. Here is a regular sentence. Anata wa ashita gakkou ni okaasan to ikimasu ka? Anata wa ashita gakkou ni okaasan to ikimasu ka? Are you going to school with your mom tomorrow? This is how you probably learn Japanese for the first time. Let's take a look at this sentence without the use of pronoun and different word orders. Ashita gakkou ni okaasan to ikimasu ka? But Japanese textbooks will teach you Anata wa ashita gakkou ni okaasan to ikimasu ka? No one would ask like this in a regular conversation in Japanese. In the beginning of Japanese study, I believe that sentences without pronoun will be very difficult for learners to grasp the idea who the subject of the sentence is, so you will see pronoun anata is used often in different sentences. In Japanese language, the information recognized between two speakers does not have to be mentioned when constructing a sentence. You may learn anata no namae wa nan desu ka? What is your name? Instead of namae wa nan desu ka? In casual speech, Namae wa nani? Anata no suki na tabemono wa nan desu ka? What is your favorite food? Instead of suki na tabemono wa? In conversations, Japanese will usually use the name of the person you're speaking to or their honorific. Sensei no suki na tabemono wa nan desu ka? Sensei no suki na tabemono wa nan desu ka? John san wa nihongo o benkyo shite imasu ka? John san wa nihongo o benkyo shite imasu ka? Or you can completely omit the pronoun you from sentences. Doko ni ikitai desu ka? Nani ga hoshii desu ka? And this is because we already know who the question is addressed to. So when you first meet someone, let's get to know them by their names. Hajime mashite, Tanaka desu. O namae wa nan desu ka? Kato desu. Now you know the person's name is Kato-san. You can address this person using his name. Kato-san wa Tokyo e itta koto ga arimasu ka? Kato-san wa ima dochira de o shigoto o nasatte masu ka? But as the conversation goes on and when you get to know this person more, we will probably start dropping the name as well. Kono mise shitte masu ka? Oishin desu yo. Kondo ishu ni ikimasen ka? See, I didn't have to use any pronouns in this sentence. So let me give you another example. Yesterday, when I asked you if you were going to school to talk to the teacher, you said yes, right? So if I translate this using all the personal pronouns, this becomes Kino watashi ga anata ni anata ga gakkou ni itte sensei to hanashi o suru no ka o kiita ra anata wa un to itta yo ne. But in natural Japanese, this will become 昨日学校に行って先生と話をするのか聞いたらうんって言ったでしょ昨日学校に行って先生と話をするのか聞いたらうんって言ったでしょ See how a sentence can be made without using any personal pronouns. This is only possible when we know who is talking to whom. And next, I wanted to show you some song titles that use あなた in their names. Here I found 2,108 songs 
that use あなた in their song titles あなたがいることであなたのキスを教えましょうあなたに会いたくてあなたにあなたの恋人になりたいのですあなただけを見つめているあなたにつく辛抱あなたに会えてよかった and so forth in conclusion あなた is used as you in general and try to avoid using あなた but rather use the real name of the person you're speaking to 田中さん or their title teacher doctor will be 先生 chief manager will be 課長 and in everyday conversations you can omit pronouns when it's possible はいというわけで今日から皆さんもあなたを使わずに日本語を話す練習をしてみてください Okay, thanks for watching and let me know what you thought about this video and make sure to give me thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. それではまた次回のビデオで会いましょう。Thanks for watching!